normative and empirical approach. Introduction of normative approach. Normative approach goes back to ancient Greece and in Confucian and Hindu philosophy. Norroch Dom Roach dominated the study of politics before 1900. It's known as normative approach because values were set up for better life. It's known as philosophical approach because theories were put forward by philosophers. When philosophers analyze theories through historical experiences, then it is called as historical approach. This approach was followed from early times since political thinking began and hence it's also called traditional approach. Let us see some of the important normative thinkers. Plato in his Republic explained the ideal state. He spoke of the philosopher king whom he believed should have supreme virtues if he had to be in charge of public affairs. Virtues, virtues, virtues were not possessed by many. So persons had to be selected and trained so that they were above desires. Plato believed that given the right atmosphere, men will develop the highest virtue and such philosopher kings will provide the best form of justice. Aristotle, Plato's student, made value judgments on forms of government and law. He believed that the state came into existence for life and continued to exist for better life. John Locke put forward the theory of natural rights and a government by consent to prevent tyranny of monarchs. He believed that government must function in the interest of the people and if it acts contrary to it, the government can be removed. Rousseau spoke of the general will as the ideal will to which all individuals must conform to enjoy their own freedom. Hegel wanted the individual self to sacrifice everything for the better self of the state. And lastly, Green believes freedom occurs when man identifies himself with what he considers morally good. Empirical approach, introduction. Till the end of the 19th century, politics was seen as a normative discipline. The beginning of empirism was seen in the writings of August Comte and in the, delib and in the deliberation of logical activist of the Vienna Circle. The Industrial Revolution had created problems which needed immediate solution, which was well expressed by Karl Marx. The philosophers have explained the world. The point is to change it. The application of empirical approach to the study of politics may be traced to the book Process of Government 1908 written by author F. Bentley and Human Nature in Politics 1908 written by Graham Wallace. According to Bentley, all political ideas and policies were the result of group activity. The individual's interaction with the group created ideas and motivations for political actions. Graham Wallace believed that the political process could be understood 
only by analyzing as to how people behaved in a political situation and not on the basis of speculation. Similarly, James Bryan's in his presidential address to the American Political Science Congress in 1909 emphasized we must have facts, facts, facts. Charles Merriam in his presidential address to the American Political Science Association in 1925 emphasized the study of political behavior as one of the essential objects of inquiry. In the article, The Present State of the Study of Politics, published in American Political Science Review, 1921, and in his book, Aspects of Politics, criticized political science for its lack of scientific rigor. Political thinker like G. E. G. Catlin's book, Science and Method of Politics, 1927, and Harold D. Loswell's work, Politics, Who Gets What, When, How, 1936, emphasized on value-free approach to their analysis of power. Thus, the emphasis focused on man and not ideals. They introduced techniques of survey, data, hypothesis, questionnaire, etc. in political studies. Let us now see the difference between normative and empirical. First, the normative approach is ethical or value oriented. That is, it deals with good and bad, right and wrong, just and unjust. The philosophers made value judgments on what is desirable and what is undesirable. For example, liberty or equality are ideals or values which are necessary for good life and this has to be adopted by the political system. The empirical approach is fact-based. Empirical approach ignores morals and values. For example, every democratic nation practices universal adult franchise. Thus, it is rational. Second, the normative approach is concerned with what ought to be or should be. For example, the state must give liberty to people without discrimination. Thus, normative approach aims at realization of liberty through state machinery. The state ought to adopt liberty because it's value oriented. The empirical approach is concerned with what is. Example, instead of studying the structure of the court, the behavior pattern of the judges of the court is studied. Third, the normative approach is prescriptive. A certain form of conduct is prescribed which the political system has to follow. For example, the state should not take the life of its citizens as punishment for a crime. The empirical approach is descriptive. The empirical approach discovers and describes facts. For example, how decisions are made, how a leader influences the group, how and why members of the group follow the leader. Fourth, alterable. Norms or values 
are subject to change that is alterable. For example, right to property was a fundamental right as per the Indian constitution which later on was deleted. The state took into account various factors and deleted it as a fundamental right. Facts are not subject to changes that is unalterable. For example, UK is regarded as mother of parliamentary democracy. Fifth, normative approach is based on assumptions. There is no evidence or proof. For example, why people should vote? It cannot be verified. Empirical approach studies political process using scientific techniques such as survey, questionnaire, data, etc. For example, survey enables the study of voting pattern of people. It can be verified. Normative approach is based on values and therefore the focus of inquiry is idealistic. For example, women prisoners should have separate prisons. Therefore, normative approach believes that better system is possible. Empirical approach is based on facts and therefore the focus of inquiry is idealistic. For example, through statistical evidence, it is possible to prove that countries that give death penalty show lesser incidence of crime when compared to countries where death penalty is not practiced. Seventh, the criteria of validity is right or wrong in normative approach. For example, governing a small state is easy as compared to large states. This statement is right or wrong as it is based on assumptions. The criteria of validity is true or false in empirical approach. For example, Article 21 in the Indian Constitution gives protection of life and personal liberty. This statement is true or false as it is based on observation and research. Eighth, normative approach is formal in nature. It studies the formal political institutions and structures. For example, origin of state, functions of state, structures of government, etc. Empirical approach is informal in nature. For example, it studies political behavior of individuals through likes and dislikes, reactions and responses, or quality of political participation, problems of leadership, role of pressure groups, trade unions, etc. Merits of normative approach. First point, guidance. The normative approach is a source of guidance to empirical researchers. Second, good life. The philosophers put forward norms which sought to establish good life. Merits of empirical approach. First point, scientific approach. Empirical approach emphasizes on facts supported with research. Second, flexible. Empirical studies can be presented either through questionnaire or survey. Therefore, it is flexible. Demerits of normative approach. 
no verification. Theories put forward by normative philosophers cannot be verified. Second, theoretical. Normative approach is theoretical and therefore there is a gap between ideal and reality. Third, not realistic. Undue importance to values by philosophers and therefore there is no reality. Fourth, decision making difficult. Ethical problems can be solved with a given set of rules but in reality decision making requires discretion and judgment. Demerits of empirical approach. First one, no universal format. There is no universal format for presentation of empirical data. For example, some may use questionnaire while others may use hypothesis. Second, problems not solved. Empirical approach was unable to find solutions to what problems caused by industrial revolution and the establishment of new nations after the Second World War.